sort of underground cult. No man is as wise as Socrates. You speak like a geriatric fool. Because he's an affront to a power, we will have to kill him anyway. And it's a bizarre cult of mad hippies in the sixth century. Plato means broad, a flat, and was the stage name of a pro wrestler born Aristocles on the island of Aegina in 428 BC. Apparently, he adopted this nom de guerre because of his exceptionally broad shoulders. True story. Though two time champ of the Asminian Games, Plato never qualified for the Olympics, necessitating a career switch. Plato's mighty heart breaking. While dabbling in poetry and politics in Athens, Mr. Broad fell in with the wandering sage Socrates mm. and his youthful students. Socrates got into the philosophy racket and famed psychic friend, the oracle at Delphi, told him, No man is as wise as Socrates. Cool. He went about proving this by shooting down Athenian conventional wisdom and back and forth dialectic critiques. So, if religion is BS, then you tell me what is truth. I do not know. What? Then how can you be wiser than anybody else? Because I know that I do not know. By Zeus, you're a pain in the ass. Socrates encouraged his students to get in the act. And you know how much young people hate showing up their elders. If you boys are searching for truth, you should look for Zeus. Are Zeus' actions arbitrary, or is he guided by truth, too? Of course Zeus is guided by truth. Well, in that case, I should just look for truth. For a wise man would not need Zeus. That didn't go over well. You going down, Mr. know it none? Dialect this, mofo! In 399 BC, Socrates was convicted of corrupting the youth of Athens and was executed with a poison cocktail of hemlock. Plato would call Socrates' death the turning point of his life. But Athens was no longer a safe place for Socratic students. He wandered the Mediterranean world in exile for over a decade. Finally ending up in Sicily, where he encountered a sect of Pythagoreans. Pythagoras, he of Triangle Thorum fame, founded a bizarre cult of math hippies in the 6th century BC, who believed they could comprehend the nature of the cosmos through numbers. To purify their minds from mystic calculations, the Pythagoreans took a vow of secrecy, could only wear white and swore off sexual intercourse. That last one, huh? Shouldn't be much of a challenge. Some of the cult's other tenets were rather uh, unique, like prohibition against touching beans. All is number, was their watchword, meaning our messy material universe is the imperfect expression of a higher abstract universe. A perfect and harmonious realm of number. Ooh, realm of numbers. Exposure to this theory led Plato to the conclusion that real truth was abstract oh. and, like numbers, unchanging, eternal. All chairs, for example, are simply the expression of the idea of a chair, and though our real chairs are flawed and temporary, the idea or form of a chair is eternal and unchanging. Plato illustrated the relationship of forms to our world thusly. Imagine the condition of men as living in a sort of underground cavern. Higher up, and some distance behind them, is the light of a burning fire. Between the fire and the men is a prophet. Behind the prophet, imagine, there are men carrying all kinds of objects, including figures of man and animals, which protect above the prophet. In all ways, men would consider reality to be nothing else than the shadows of those artificial objects. For Plato, though, 
The highest duty of the philosopher was to look beyond these shadows of our perceived reality and uncover the forms that projected them. Plato smash! In fact, preferring the ideal to the physical was such an obsession of Plato's. Lance, I want a relationship to stay platonic. That his name became a synonym for it. Alas, Platonism did not serve its creator well when he became court philosopher to Dionysius, the king of Syracuse. Must you be so, carnal? You speak like a geriatric fool! And you speak like a tyrant. Uh, Plato had this problem with authority. Dionysius decided to humiliate Plato by selling him into slavery to his hometown of Aegina where, fortuitously, a buddy bought his freedom. His benefactor also gave him enough dough to set up a school just outside Athens. Plato named it after a former resident of neighborhood, Hero Hecademus. At the academy, Plato divested Pythagorism of its Mondo Bizarro rituals and gave the Socratic knee-jerk critiquing the theory of forms as an operating value system thereby creating college. Like any good professor, Plato published widely as well. Again? But I gotta talk about my independent study. Plato's works take the form of dialogues or discussions between teacher and student. Invariably, the teacher is Socrates himself, resurrected by Plato to mouth his own theories and give them added legitimacy. Brains must use brains. In the Apology, Plato transforms transient crackpot Socrates into history's first liberal martyr. Since I do not know what comes after death, why should I fear it? His witty humanism trumps our state adherence to tradition. He's right, but because he's an affront to our power, we will have to kill him anyway. Plato's academy thrived for centuries as a center for mathematics and ethics, two subjects dependent on absolutes. But in his dialogue, The Republic, Plato himself tried using the same absolutes to propose the perfect society. Here, children would be taken from their mothers at birth and raised in state orphanages, so they would think of the government as their parents. Schooling determined a citizen's place in society. All those who flunked gym became farmers to grow food for the good of all. I hate dodgeball. If you passed gym but flunked math, you'd enter the military. There's three thousands of them. It's one plus one plus one of us. We outnumber them. Get them, boys. But if you excelled at gym and math, you were one of the elite, destined to lead the Republic, and you would get to study, wait for it, philosophy. Surprise, these philosopher rulers would sleep together, work together, and share all possessions, and this would keep them free from corruption. Political corruption, that is. One of the 35 would be chosen to be the philosopher king who would rule over all. All music and literature that did not praise the state would be banned. All individualism would be utterly eradicated. Plato would have forced human society to adhere to the impossible, abstract standard of the realm of forms. In 367 BC, Plato was offered an opportunity to realize his demented brand of homoerotic fascism. Dude, come back to Syracuse. My brother Dionysus is dead. We can set up the Republic. It'll be awesome. Mm. Things didn't go exactly as planned. Plato wisely stayed out of politics until his death in 347 BC. The Christian emperor, Justinian, shut down the academy in AD 529 because it was too atheistic for him. This event is usually used to demarcate the start of the Dark Ages. Nevertheless, the fundamentals of academic life have changed little since Plato invented them. So... If you ever thought your professors were a little dictatorial or just plain out to lunch. The subliminal reinscribement of phallocentric species hegemony in 1980s video games is most apparent in the psychosexual tropes of uh, burger time. Well, now you know where they were lunching. Oh, realm 
of ideas.